This is a Bob Clouser minnow. Bob is a very famous tire. I, I, the, we're going to replace the pattern in the book with this genuine Bob Clouser uh, format. And I, I like it better. Uh, the first thing we're going to have to do is tie a, I think Bob calls a bump on the hook shank. And I got mine a little bit too far forward last time, so I'm going to back it up a little bit. You want it about, Bob says a third, but his third doesn't really equate to a third the way I saw his hook size. So I'm just trying to approximate what I saw on his, uh, on his, the way he tied his pattern. But you can see I'm just making a bump there out of my thread. Okay. It doesn't have to be a giant bump, just enough to keep the, the eye from going forward. And on a, on a size uh, 6 hook, 3XL, uh, you probably want a, a medium sized dumbbell eye for this. And when you attach it, you want to use only cross wraps. So I'm going to place that dumbbell right behind that bump. Now, the trickiest part for me is getting it attached. I'm having a little bit better luck this time. You can want to get it so it's level and uh, Just use cross wraps, don't use figure eights. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to lay my thread base on down toward the eye after I've got the dumbbell eyes on. And then when I stop, I'm going to stop about halfway between the dumbbell eye and the eye of the hook. Most of, uh, you'll see, most Bob Clouser minnows are done in a white bucktail and chartreuse. The first thing we're going to be tying on is the, the white bucktail. And I had several white bucktails in the club stock you got to be careful which part of the bucktail you use for this. You don't want the bucktail nearest the rump of the deer. You want it up near the end of the tail because that bucktail is not nearly as, as hollow. If you have uh, the bucktail that used near the, the, the rump of the deer, that's the material you use for poppers, and we are not doing a popper today. So I don't want this bucktail to do a lot of flaring when we cinch it down. So I've, I've pulled out, if I had any, any extras, I still see some that are here that are a little too long. I got some stuff that's kind of messed up. I want to get rid of that. And I've got kind of a, notice that we don't have all the ends we don't have all the ends even. I want it tapered so that the shape of a minnow when we're finished is going to be more pronounced. And I'm going to measure that. And I want that about length of the sh hook shaft plus at least, a, at least a half. And then I'm going to cut that off nice and square. Now, Notice, as I squeeze that, I've made an oval or a flat appearing bundle. That is critical to this, the, sh the final shape of this fly having a more minnow shape. And as you tie this on, you're going to lay that up. I've got that squeezed into a bundle, and I'm going to just make a couple easy wraps, and then I'm going to try to tighten those down halfway point back down to the eye. 
if you lose a few pieces of bucktail, that's not a big deal. Okay? But I've got this tied in at about the halfway point, and I'm going to go ahead and build up a, a little bit of a... Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I caught the thread on the eye of that hook, and it... Uh, it cut I'm on going me. to try and salvage this. Maybe I got it, maybe I didn't. We'll see. Okay. Okay, I think I salvaged it. Get rid of my second tag end here. Okay, I've got that attached. If you, we need to bring that thread under the uh, bucktail clump, and I've still got that that whole bunch. I've got it all squeezed in vertical, kind of a vertical oval. And I'm going to, notice how I'm holding that tail up at an angle. I'm going to go over that and cinch that tight right behind the dumbbell eyes. And then still holding that up, I'm going to go back and make some loose wraps. If you do this right, you'll only have bucktail on the top of the hook, not below the side of the hook. Okay. Well, can't get anything to cut. Okay. Now at this point, if you look at the bottom of that hook, I can see silver all the way through. Not my best job, but most of my bucktail is on the top of the hook. And at this point, we're going to kind of turn that hook upside down. And I'm going to need some crystal flash, six or eight strands of it. get some out of this plastic bag. Now I'm going to take those strands, I'm going to trim one in so that they're all the same length. And this part is, I think this part is kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to hold the strands back behind my thread, pull them against the thread, and squeeze them. Then I'm. Uh, no, I've got to forget all the above. I've got to move my thread back up to the eye of the hook. Okay. And I'm going to take those strands, now that I got my thread back by the eye of the hook, I'm going to fold them over that th thread and squeeze them. Now bring that up to the eye of the hook. And I'm going to tie those up to the midway point on what is now the top of the hook. And then I'm going to trim them a little bit longer than the the white bucktail. Try and get those strands kind of split them in between the the hook. And we're almost finished. 
going to cut another clump of chartreuse bucktail. And I do the same thing we did before with the white. I'm going to get rid of all the the really short stuff. Maybe have maybe just a slightly bit larger amount of bucktail than we had for the white. And I'm going to measure that about the same length or maybe just a go shorter and cut that off. I'm going to keep that clump elevated again. I'm going to lay that over there gently. I'm going to wrap that in back to my midpoint. And then I'm going to build a nice white thread head for my fly. Try to cover up all that chartreuse so all I have showing is white thread. Finish that off. Do that twice. I didn't sound too good. If you want to try this on trout, I'd probably drop down to <clears throat> maybe a and maybe a size 10 3XL for the, the trout around here. I'm going to put a little bit of head cement on my eye or my my the head. If you uh, have a UV outfit, UV cement outfit, that works great as well. And I'm going to put some thread over the bottom of my fly where I made those wraps back toward the eye, just to give it a little bit more protection. If you have the silver eyes, it took me about, oh gosh, I don't remember how long, to put the red fingernail polish on and then the black iris on those. But there is a 